Welcome to the podcast series on technology and innovation in coaching, brought to you by the Association for Coaching, the world's leading independent body. I am Claudia Day, coach and entrepreneur and founder of eHuddle. In this AC podcast series, we are privileged to talk to coaches, academics and entrepreneurs who will be sharing with us some of their research, findings and experiences related to technologies that could help us democratize coaching, elevate the coaching practice, lower cost or save time, among other benefits. This is a very broad topic, going from how technologies can support a coach or carry out a coaching process. We hope this series brings technology closer to coaches. Enjoy listening. Welcome to David Clutterbuck, co-author of and editor of more than 70 books and one of the world's top coaches with a variety of fellowship and awards. It is a pleasure to have you with us. Thank Since you. you don't need much of an introduction, I thought instead you could tell us what makes you passionate about technology and coaching. Anything that enables us to concentrate more and focus more on, on our client, to, to be able to access more information that will help our client, that's great about technology. But the downside of that is technology can very often do exactly the opposite. It can get in the way. It can distract us. And so we have to be to be really careful about how we use it. Definitely. You mentioned that uh, in your last article that coaching will either undergo rapid change or it might become less relevant. What types of changes do you see as imminent for coaches? Well, certainly it, one of the things we're seeing is, is systemic awareness. So much of what coaches at the basic level of the, the grow model type coaches do can already be done as effectively by robots, by artificial intelligence. So if we're not able to add more value, then we start to, lo to lose value. And we're seeing this inexorable movement now. We, we're moving from helping one or two individuals build a skill, which is where coaching started in the 19, late 1970s, early 1980s, to helping them deal with much more difficult issues like career transitions, getting into the territory of mentoring, uh, where, where you're helping somebody with becoming, not achieving. And then we see it moving in, into the whole area of working with individuals, individual leaders, to be more effective at running their teams, and then working with the teams together, then working with teams of teams, with organizational systems, with coalitions of organizations, with societies. We start to see the bigger and bigger picture. And the, the, the inexorable drive here is for coaching to have a bigger and bigger impact on more and more complex situations. So simplistic coaching is where we began. And we're in a constant race now and will be for, the, for, for decades that technology will be able to do a large part of what we of the rote stuff. So we'll be leaving things behind in many ways, but always able to go back to them if we need to. But we constantly need to be expanding our horizons, the complexity of the situations that we're in uh, and that we, and we're working with. So we're moving from linear thinking to systemic thinking to complex adaptive systemic thinking. Those are big journeys to make. And the technology can support us or it can drown us. So there you, you spoke about coaching on a one-to-one -one basis, but also the whole system, taking into account the whole system. So I was wondering if you could go more into, into that and, and, and tell more of the listeners about that. Let's take it there's, there's a team. You've got two people who are in conflict within a team. So your linear approach is, is just tell them, grow up and bang their heads together. And, and, and that would be a linear approach. A systemic approach would, would, would start to look at, okay, well, what is it about the relationship between them, their perceptions of each other and the way that they work and so forth. So you would look at, look at the personalities, you do personality profile and all sorts of things and look at the system around, between the two of them. But a complex adaptive systems approach would go beyond that and say, well, okay, so what are the forces that are acting on them beyond that sim those simple personality issues. Um, so for example, do they, do they come from different cultures that have, that have different expectations? Are they, um, do they have relationships with different key stakeholders and are trying to look after the different stakeholders and are seeing that and though the tensions between the stakeholders are actually being reflected in, in terms of tensions within the team. So the, 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 more, the wider we go, the more complex the situations are. And so coaching has got to be able to, uh, to cope with increasing complexity. So expanding a bit that curiosity that the coach has to have to all the system. Yeah. How can the technology that is available today help us to understand these systems better? Well, one thing that, that they can do, it can take a lot of the, the grunt work out of it. 
So the coach bots available for coaching, for example, uh, for team coaching can help people to, to really think to, um, it can gather a lot of the basic data that we might want. The danger here is that in gathering that data, we, we, we leave out the critical element of the coach doing interviews with people and just rely on that data. So if you give somebody an emotional intelligence questionnaire, for example, and they fill it in, then you've got some information about emotional intelligence. It doesn't tell you anything about anything else that might be influencing that complex system. It's telling you one little bit of it. And so the bot will only look at the bits of the system that you program it to do. It's the intuitive understanding of the coach, the things that come out of asking those sudden intuitive questions that throw open doors on, in, on a whole big area that actually have the biggest impact. And so we can use this, the, the, the information from the coach bots quite simply, and it's very useful, but it doesn't do the whole job. Yeah, no, makes sense. So this is basically now, this is, these technologies are already available. In the future, what do you see, how do you see this evolving? Well, I th the, the technologies are evolving in on all sorts of ways. I'm, I'm currently getting deeply into virtual reality coaching. This is tremendous fun uh, because we can arrange to meet as coach and coachee or, or even better as a team, uh, doing team coaching in a virtual room where we can relax in a Japanese water garden and actually get, get into the mood so that all well, that, that sort of preparation of getting into the right mind frame is there. So then we can move to a more work, works type space and then continue the conversation there. So what we're going to be seeing increasingly is the technology to, from on, on, on all, all of the, the Zoom and other platforms will start to be will, will start to switch also into into a greater capacity to, to, to work in virtual reality rather than this, this flat screen, um, just picture of head and, head and shoulders. So the, the technology is moving very fast and will enable us to do all sorts of things. The one that's a biggest question is, is artificial intelligence. At the moment, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, the, the algorithms are not yet capable of really holding that, 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 that the same kind of conversation as, as, as we do. It will work according to the number of conversations that, that, that it's had and the experience, there's a learned experience before, just as we do, but we have different types and much wider experience. Now, we know that there are various platforms which are collecting conversations between coaches and, and clients. Data mining that will produce ever more sophisticated robots, which will be able to um, replicate the kind of questions that, 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 that the coach would, would ask. But at the same time, they, they can support a coach really working face to face with a client by providing all sorts of information and suggestions. And it's that it's that interview, intermediate step where they can be most helpful. This, where they're providing support to the coach is one thing. Where they're taking over from the coach is another. And that's a really difficult and dangerous area to, to be in. One of the big problems in that area is that inevitably the majority of people who get coaching and can afford to pay for coaching tend to be white educated people from from very similar backgrounds when we look back and look at what's happened in um, in, in technology with the, the the smart car the driverless cars for example being programmed to work to recognize white faces but not black faces we are in dreadful danger of replicating that same thing actually accelerating something which is a, already a big problem for coaching making it, it basically ethnically and culturally narrow instead of instead of diverse so we've got some real ethical issues to deal with around uh, around that whole problem. But I can see this this growth of of the AI as a partner in the whole process. So how do we actually use the AI intelligently? And the AI can provide what I call skinny wisdom. That's expertise in a, in a narrow area. We as humans provide broad wisdom, which is wisdom that comes from, 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 from living and, and, and being and, and experiencing things. And also a meta wisdom, which, is, which enables us to put multiple bodies of knowledge together in an eclectic way. Now, you know, ultimately, AI will be able to do that. But for the moment, it's, it, 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 it's not it, for a long time. It's, it's unlikely to be capable of, of doing that. Yeah, yeah. So there, you covered many things in, in, in that one. Can you go a bit more into your thoughts about ethics and technology and what ethic issues coaches need to be thinking about when they introduce technology? Well, one of the, the big issues is privacy. So who, who owns the conversation? So let, let's take a, a situation where the coach ha, um, um, has brought their AI in or had their AI on when they're doing a call like this. 
and the AI has been listening in and doing and doing analysis. If I'm doing this and, and I'm the coach on one of my other screens, the AI will pop up um, a message saying, I'm interesting. They've used that that word complexity five times now. What might be the significance of that? Or did you notice that uh, that the the, um, the body language and change in, in, in vocal tone there that indicated um, that, that might indicate avoidance of an issue or uh, a sense of fear? In, in an issue. So it's, it's, it'll be giving you all this information. Now, our, our big problem here is do we actually, if there's too much information, we're going to get distracted by it. So we as in, in a partnership, the AI and the coach learn together when the AI should actually really flag something up for your attention and when you go and ask it for information. And that process of uh, ability of AI and humans to learn has to be integrated. Now, we don't know how to do that yet. So that, that I think, is, is, a, is a big issue. But all the way through here, we're using a lot of data. We're, we're capturing stuff about the, that, that person that they don't even know that is, 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 is there. Who, who owns that data? Where does it get stored? Do they have a right to see what the, what the, the coach's AI intuits or, 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 or interprets from the conversation? These, I think, are very big ethical issues. And then when you take it to your supervisor, what happens then? You're sharing this. The supervisor's AI is going to be, co- going to be talking to the coach's AI and sharing information and, and, and looking for patterns of data. The data privacy thing, thing is, I think, one of the most complex things which we haven't yet got a clue how to manage. Yes, definitely. And, and, and many people in organizations are working on the pro to try and evolve that. Yeah, I saw that you just launched the Coach Ethics Forum. Will you be touching some of these topics there? Well, ab- absolutely. There's a book coming out, out on it. I've just been supporting um, the people um, launching, Wendy Ann Smith and her colleagues uh, in, in launching it. Uh, um, but it's certainly something that I think is a very important vehicle. I mean, there are ethical codes all over the place. It's one thing to have a code of practice or an ethics code. It's another thing to behave and think ethically. Yes. One of the things that's come out in, in, in the banks is that they they thought, oh, well, after the, the scandals of the, uh, the first 10 years of the cent- this century, that you could get everybody in a room, explain the code of ethics and, and the behaviors you expected of them, and then go away and expect them to, be, and, uh, to, to behave ethically. Of course, it didn't work. You know, ethics is a state of mind. It's not just a bunch of rules. It's how do we interpret that ethical awareness and the tools to actually enable people to have conversations about ethical issues. Yes. So how to integrate it even more to our practice and to our daily lives. Yeah. And, and you know, the kind of judgment, the intuitive thinking through that's required to balance values against values which is effectively what we're doing in making ethical decisions. Nobody, to my knowledge, has any idea how we might enable a computer to do that. Something to explore and to look forward to reading more about. Yeah. You also mentioned within the future of AI, how it will become a partnership. Yeah. And that the risk of, there is the risk, of course, of the client side. Will they know about how this data is being used or, or, or what the data says? And I guess the risk of the partnership leaving outside the client or how to deal with the client in this partnership, using your supervisor hat, yes. how, how do you advise or how do you work with coaches in, in trying to deal with this? Well, again, we don't have any rules around this yet. But the constant recontracting with the client about the conversation we're having, how that data will be used, what they want to do with the data that's coming out, out, out from this. So if, for example, one of the ways we, 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 can, um, we can use an AI is to listen into the conversations within a team and to deduce the level of psychological safety in that team. Now, you obviously have to contract with the team before you did that in order to be able to do that analysis. But now that data gets shared with the team and they get the chance to talk about about it and and to deal with the issues. You can also use it to review, saying the point at which psychological safety was lowest was when the team leader um, basically shouted at us or whatever. But you can pinpoint those issues. Now, everyone in the team is sharing that data. Do you want everybody to be able to to, to, to hold on to this and say and, and put onto YouTube, here's a clip of my manager get, having a rant. That's probably not a great idea. So there's lots and lots of technical of issues here about 
the protocols for owning and sharing of information. We're going to be drowning in information if we're not careful. Um, and we're going to be getting into all sorts of, of complexities about what we do with that information. Yes, um, here you, you started giving us examples. And I think something for the listeners to hear more about these examples of how technology can be used. I was wondering if you could give us a peek into your practice, into your coaching practice and examples of how the technology has benefited the client or yourself to try and open our, our minds to how it can be used. I think um, I'm, I'm nearly 75, so, so, work, so get, you know, getting really familiar with the technology takes me longer. But I am, uh, we, I am experimenting with, using, with, with virtual reality, and that's something that I think is going to become commonplace within the next two or three years. It takes a while to get used to working with the handset. It's very clunky at the moment. But within a couple of years, it'll be, it'll be a lot smoother. You know, when you think back to the first video conferences, you know, they were, they were very, very, they were a lot of hard work. They kept breaking down, all sorts of things. So learning not just the technology, but also how to work with that technology. So it's things like, like um, interpreting the gestures that people make. Now, you know, on Zoom, I can't, I can just see, I, I can't really see, I, can, I could just see your head and face. I, I have no idea what you're doing with your arms. And I'm, I sort of set my, my screen so that people can see my, my arms, and my, my hands, so that, so that it, it's more than just the face. So there's a bit more to express, of, 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 of me to express. Um, with the avatars at the moment, they sort of cut off um, um, about, about the middle, although you can have full avatars as, as well. But we'll get more and more realistic um, avatars as in, over the next 24 months or, or so, I would, I would think, which will enable us to be much more relaxed. It'll be much, much closer to having a conversation with somebody in the same room. But at the same time, we can bring in other players, either for real or as avatars, into our conversations. So, okay, you're having, you're having you know, some real problems with your boss. So let's bring an avatar of your boss into the room. So let's have a conversation with him about, you know, with, with him about his perception on, the, on, on the, these issues. How, what would he would be saying in this conversation? So we're starting to be able to use these technologies in ways we'd never thought of before. I'm still very much at the beginning of learning of this, but this is for me a, an important step becoming much more familiar with it. The other things that we're doing is, is, is producing a lot more apps. We've got an app just about to be reduced to, we've got three actually in, in, in production at the moment. We've got one uh, that's that's ready to go uh, in the new year, which is um, um, an app of powerful questions. So it's, it's a, it, it comes straight from a book that I did on, of powerful questions for coaches and mentors. You basically, you're in a particular situation, you look up the keywords in the index and it gives you a whole load of powerful questions you can ask in that particular situation. Another one is about develop, the, the development of coaches. So um, helping coaches with their own development planning. We, we've got a, t a small team working on that one. And we're also turning the um, my um, adaptive systems model of team functioning into an app which coaches can use uh, in the way that they, they run team coaching sessions. And, and for diagnosing what's going on within teams, helping teams to work out where they need to focus on, imp on making improvements, but all also to, to help, help the coach feel more comfortable that almost whatever happens, they've got a way forward. So these are just some of the things that... Uh, that I'm using, I'm, I'm getting involved with, and it's enormous fun. So I guess that's that's a key part of it, still seeing the fun in it and enjoying the process of getting to know the technologies while they come out. Yeah. I mean, at my age, I get much more frustrated when the technology doesn't work. <laughs> it, it, and, 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 that's, and I think we, given that, men, that very often the clients that, people, that, that coaches have are quite senior people, 50s, 60s or, or, or beyond, the speed with which we're able to come up to get comfortable with, with, with the technology. We need a little bit more support and help in doing it. We can always get okay. there, but I think that having that patience, you know, the coach may be very familiar with this, but the client may not. And so we're going to have a major client education issue here. Now, it may well be that in terms of things like virtual reality, the companies that employ these people will already have um, given lots of training in, in using it in, uh, in these ways will already have happened. We won't need to do that education. But I think at least in the next, tw next 24 months, coaches that want to work with AI and work with virtual reality are going to need to, to, to support the education of their clients. Yes, definitely. So there's two sides, basically clients who are already using these technologies in their work workplace and are trained on them. But then also as a coach, being conscious that some of them not haven't and that they need that space to learn about them before using them. Yeah. That, that's a great call out. 
you mentioned about this rapid appearance of new technologies, and there is the risk of forgetting those that have been around for a while. And for example, you mentioned thinking time as one of the benefits of using asynchronous email conversations because the client doesn't react immediately. Yeah. So what else do you think about uh, basic technologies that we still should uh, take advantage of in our coaching and um, also in the time between sessions? You know, just the act of writing as opposed to typing can actually help us to absorb, to reflect more effectively because it's slower. And so slowing ourselves down is an important part. We, we, we try and slow our clients down so they think more and do less. But we have to, have to adapt it for ourselves. So technologies that slow us down are, I think, quite important. But getting out and leaving the computer behind completely, uh, maybe having a, a, um, a phone with us, but the whole area of walking coaching is a, is a, is a big growing area. Getting out into, 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 into nature, into the forest or wherever, and doing the, the coaching there. Now, we can often combine it. One of the things that I think is fascinating is walking through a virtual forest. And again, this is where the virtual reality comes in. We can combine old technologies and new ones in different ways. So basically that, that thinking of slowing down and using the technology as well to slow down the client and ourselves. Yeah, we think about the technology as speeding everything up, but I think we need to look, use the technology to slow down. At the end of every podcast, we ask every speaker to choose five things around them and tell them why they're relevant. Ah, oh my goodness. I have around me a lot of um, jugs. And, uh, and mugs, they all have one thing in common. They are all designed to spill wine or beer over people who are unwary. Um, <laughs> and that's part of my, my I'm fascinated by, uh, by anything that creates laughter. So that's one, one thing. What else have I got around me? Um, well, as an, as an older person, I, I've got my hearing aids. I've actually got them in. Hearing is one of the things that goes as we, as we, as we get, get older. But actually, you know, the whole point of listening more it re well, every time I see that, it reminds me to listen even harder. What else have I got here? Um, I have all these certificates from post, you know, for postgraduate this and doctoral certificates for that. Um, they're wonderful, but they're not as not, they, they don't look as good as close wallpaper. And I think not, not to take them too seriously is a, is a key thing for me. And then um, just the technology, a simple thing like like the telephone. It is there when it's used appropriately. It can create wonderful things. It can also be a pain in the neck and it's getting the balance right. So that's just some of the things that I see. Wonderful. And in final, the, a book related to the topic that you recommend and also one that you are reading for pleasure. Ah, well, one that I've just finished, re I've finished reading for pleasure is, um, I've been going through it and going back through it actually, is one called Super Senses, uh, which, which in introduces us to not the five senses we have, but the 32 senses that we have. That's a, a, a really interesting uh, one for, that I'm really, really for pleasure. And in terms of interesting and serious, um, I'm, looking, I'm looking over my shoulder at something called, called Noise by Daniel Kahneman, which is about, think, but about how we actually filter out all of that extraneous stuff that we, that, that around us, the, the, the stuff that gets in the way of good decision making. Sounds like two great reads. Thank you so much for taking the time and giving us a little overview and oversight of your thoughts around technology and coaching. Well, if anybody wants to actually see, I, I, every year I publish um, my, my top 10 reads of the year. But this year, Peter Hawkins and I have done a joint one. And so that's on both of our, our, um, our LinkedIn feeds. So if anybody wants to access my 10 recommendations and Peter's as well, um, just go on to LinkedIn and, um, and, and, and follow. Amazing. Thank you. So David, for our listeners to learn more, what is the best place to connect with you going forward? Uh, if you go on to LinkedIn and find, follow my profile on, on LinkedIn, it's fairly easy, easy to find. Or alternatively, coachingandmentoringinternational.org. So coaching and A&D, mentoringinternational.org is, uh, is, is one of my main web websites. Or if you just want to send me an email, do. And the simplest email is davidclutterbuck at me.com. Perfect. Thank you. So thank you for listening to another episode by the Association for Coaching. I have been Claudia Day. Our purpose is to help coaches in the process of navigating the new technologies that are arising in this field. If you would like to find out more, please follow us on LinkedIn or explore our webpage at theassociationforcoaching.com. There you can keep up to date with our latest episodes and conversations as well as our digital learning calendar.